Hey everybody, it's Melissa here with Sex, Love, and Rocking the Soul, and today's video is a little bit more just me talking about a personal part of my life, and that's why I chose to be in an open relationship, or something more monogamish. Um, I did post a video not too long ago around creating your own custom relationship, and I want to go deeper into the backstory of why I chose to be more into an open relationship. So I, and then I'll get to some questions that some of you had post on my Facebook. So back when I, you know, became an adult, I'm not going to go into high school because I don't think that's really relevant, but back when I was dating in my early 20s and onto my 30s, um, I've been engaged a few times and I've been a, what they call a serial monogamous and I've been in some serious relationships and fallen in love and been very happy and content. However, I noticed in some of my relationships that after some time, and sometimes right away, it varied, um, I would notice I would have different connections with other men or other people outside my my relationship in monogamy. And there would be either like attractions, um, which are sometimes fleeting, um, but there would be also some genuine connections. And in the box of monogamy, I it wasn't appropriate to even, you know, explore that. It wasn't it wasn't appropriate to to voice any um, needs or desires and you definitely couldn't go out or I couldn't go out and, and explore this other person or eat, let alone have any kind of intimacy whether it was like you know private time or kiss or flirting or any of that none of that was really appropriate and um, after a while I started noticing it really started to kind of annoy me or just really kind of make me feel a lot of pressure about sustaining my current relationship. And it was interesting because um, when I was engaged around the time that I had my restaurant, and this was about 06, 07, and 08, something, no wait, about 06. Yes, 06, 07, and 08. A anyway, I was very much in love and um, thought I was going to be married. And there reached a point where I was planning for the wedding and I just started kind of panicking. Because I thought, oh my God, did I pick the right person? Oh my God, I, I, I'm not going to be able to, to kiss anybody else or have any other kind of connections in any way. Um, and that bothered me. And, and that was hard to admit and hard to say. Because when you say that, at least from my experience, to family and friends that are that only know monogamy, they look at you like you're a fucking weirdo. And that there must be something wrong with you. Or you can't commit. Or... Maybe you should just be single or whatever. But I was deeply in love with this person and wanted to be married, but I also felt really kind of uncomfortable with, with monogamy and the container that it was. So I even asked him, you know, when we decided to break up for other reasons, there was other deep issues there, but we broke up and we tried to get back together. And I said, well, would you ever be open to an open relationship? And he definitely wasn't. And I had to, you know, honor that. As, as he had to honor, you know, my needs and wants for the long term. If I'm going to be with someone for 50 years, for me, not for everybody, um, I wanted to be able to um, spend time or have something on the outside of what we consider monogamy. I didn't know what that was yet because I, I'd heard of people that were swingers and like seen movies about polyamory and all this stuff. And I thought it was all kind of either not possible or I thought it was like some, you know, weird way of being, you know, not being able to commit or whatever. So I didn't really go deeper into it. So, um, you know, fast forward, you know, a few years, um, I dated someone very briefly who, and we didn't even sleep together, which was just interesting, um, who, who mentioned, hey, I, I want to date you or hang out with you, but just so you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more into openness. I'm more into open relating. And I thought, hmm, that sounds interesting because I'd heard a little bit about it but wasn't sure how to do it. And he just said, yeah, um, everything's open. I'll be with different people. I don't expect a lot from you. You don't need to check in with me all the time and vice versa. And, and that actually that worked out really well because, you know, both of us were traveling a lot and, you know, we'd only see each other every few months. And so in the context of us, you know, creating a way that we could relate, whether you call it dating or whatever, that really worked uh, for us. And I liked the openness. Now that one had its holes and had its, you know, issues because there was times when he was not completely transparent about what was happening. And, 
and but we all learn. I've made that mistake too, which will be another video. I've definitely bitten the dust and lied and and done some pretty crappy things, but <laughs> that can happen in any kind of relationship, even monogamy. So fast forwarding, I did um, date somebody for a few years, my last relationship, and right out of the gate, right off the bat, we were very honest and upfront that we didn't want monogamy, but we didn't weren't sure really what we wanted, but we wanted to be able to flirt with other people, spend time with other people, be intimate on some level with other people. And it was, uh, again, not a lot of pressure. It was just, if I feel this way, and if I want to do this, I'll bring it to you and see how you feel and all that. So that was the first real practicing relationship that I had that was open. It was awesome. I really loved it. It, it was fabulous. And after that, I really couldn't go back. It was interesting. <laughs> anyway, so that worked out great as far as like practicing non-monogamy and I felt really good. Yes, of course, things would come up as any relationship. Some people have this idea that if you're in a poly or open, if it's so great, how come you need to talk all the time or, you know, what's, yeah, why do you have issues if it's so awesome? I think any relationship is going to have its issues and, and things to work through. Um, so you have to be really clear on, I guess, why it is you're wanting the open relationship and what style of open relationship do you want? Do you want to be polyamorous where you have many, you know, multiple, um, close bonds and relationships with people, including family, including children? Um, do you want to keep something super casual? Do you want to be more of a swinger type uh, where there's no, you know, emotional bonds? Do you want to keep something open? And I opt for something more customary because I love to custom build. I like something kind of in between all that because in order for me to be deeply intimate with somebody I need some sort of relationship and also I just love relating with other people on a deeper level than just surfacey and maybe just meeting them at a play party or a party or whatever never seeing them again although that's fun too um but yeah so fast forwarding to my current relationship I again I wouldn't have it any other way I really appreciate and really love the openness and I can have other connections outside my relationship and I can spend time with other people and yes there's a ton of negotiating because we have certain boundaries and every relationship does you have certain boundaries of what makes you feel comfortable and um, you know you can make your own rules up so I'm going to answer a couple questions here that I got on Facebook and uh, we'll see where that leads the first one's uh, from Cassia, and she says, are there monogamous type people to date anymore? This seems to be very hard to find. I feel almost as if I am so constantly accepting a poly type lifestyle so I can still enjoy connection because it's hard to find someone who can relax into monogamy. Ah, uh, yeah, it just, there's tons, there's lots of monogamous people, maybe not in your area. <laughs> Um, and as far as like relaxing in a monogamy, I've seen people relax into all kinds of different relationships. So it's really about finding someone that has the same values and has the same wants and desires as you do. And they're out there. You can find really great monogamous people as you can with any style. So keep looking, Cassia. And you might even try um, some dating sites and stuff. Unfortunately, it's not really my world, so I don't know where to start. But you might start reaching out and seeing if you can kind of dip into other communities and find, because there are people out there. I think what you're also finding is that it's becoming more and more open and popular and more um, talked about, and more people are doing it nowadays, is experimenting with some level of openness or non-monogamy. So you might be kind of running into those streams. You never know. The next person is from Lindsay. And she says, navigating, establishing boundaries and agreements, needs and wants. That's what she wants to know about. Um, every relationship's different. Some relationships don't have any rules at all. Some people um, set up negotiations with their partner where they don't need to know details of what they're doing outside of their relationship. Some people want to know a lot. Um, some people have boundaries with how intimate they can go or... Um, how emotional they can go or what activities and when and all that. So you really have to make it up. A really good book that I've been kind of getting into but I haven't read all the way is called Opening Up from Tristan 
um, Teramino, and she goes into tons. She, there's a ton of resources on the things to talk about when you're when you're in some sort of open relationship, and I would definitely look into that because everyone's going to be different. What Lindsay, what you're going to want may be different than my experience and what I'm doing. So you really need to get clear with your partner. You know, when we can be intimate with others, what does that include? Um, do we require you know, full disclosure? Do we want disclosure right away? Do we want to, don't ask, don't tell? Uh, do, is, can it be a friend of ours? Can it, does it have to be a stranger? Can it be ongoing? Those are things to really think about. And sometimes you don't know your boundaries or your limits until they've been met or bumped up against. So just keep flexible, keep open, and just keep um, talking with your partner and finding out what really works for you. And you guys kind of set out your own gu guidelines. Um, Jean asks, are you avoiding any real commitment by being open? Some people are. There are people out there that are like, can't get close to anybody and don't want any responsibility and don't want to be really emotional with people. And so openness is really great for them. And so be it. If that's what they want. Um, I don't feel like I'm avoiding any real commitment by being open. Yeah, I can't say that I am. Yeah, I perhaps maybe I'm less likely to be more committed to others, although I really like close relationships in general. So, and my relationship right now isn't exactly poly, although I really love that style too, because I could imagine, you know, living in that world. So we'll see. Talk to me in 10 years. We'll see. But I think in general, no, I'm not avoiding commitment. I'm very much... Um, love commitment and love relationship. I just really love connecting with other people. I always have. Even when I was a teenager, I never understood how monogamy could work. And that's me. It's not the way to be. It's just a way. And I really appreciate it. And it works for me. Um, Heather asks, is it worth it after all the negotiation? Yes. I think the only way that it wouldn't be worth all the negotiation, and meaning like talking about boundaries, navigating agreements and wants and upsets and partners everywhere and things going on, I think the only way that it couldn't be worth it, or it may feel really like, oh God, is if there's no progress and you're not settling on any you know common ground and you're not like, but it takes time. It takes time to really like sculpt and create your relationship and navigate pit holes, pitfalls. You're, you're, it's going to happen. Things are going to happen and things are going to come up. But you have to be really committed to one another and want to work things out. It's not a seamless, effortless thing that happens. And maybe for some, in some circumstances, it does. But generally speaking, when you're open and raw and vulnerable like that, there's going to be things that come up. And because we're dealing with individuals, there's going to be different perspectives and different personalities and people are going to handle things very differently. So negotiations are important and sometimes they can be totally exhausting, but in the end it's really valuable and I wouldn't change it for the world. So I'm coming up on 13 minutes and I think that's enough, but I just want to let you peer into my mind and, and let you know and see a part of my life. And so uh, thanks for watching. I'm Melissa Mango with Sex, Love, Soul. Be sure to check out my website, sexlovesoul.com. It's totally amazing and beautiful.